Today's topic is going to be U.S. entry waiver processing times. You guys have to know and understand that for these U.S. entry waivers, they are not processed overnight, be it by CBP or us. Now, processing times can vary. Now, these discount waiver companies will tell you, oh, they guarantee that you will get a waiver in six months. That's BS. Some firm, well, a lot of law firms will tell you the same thing, six months, three months, blah, blah, blah. That's BS. Guys, first of all, let me give you a good example. Let's just say you're convicted in the city of Brampton, Ontario. And let's go back to my good old favorite, possession for the purpose of trafficking. Quite often, the Brampton court can take forever, for whatever reason, they can take forever to pull a court file. You guys are increasing your own processing times. Now let's just say there's no criminality. You've got immigration violations. Well, those have to be handled differently. So once we get the relevant information for, the, um, for those violations and prepare the waiver packet, that's additional processing time. That time varies. So it really, really depends. Now one thing happens is when you guys come to the office. Hello, everyone. It's Ken Scott, senior U.S. Immigration Law Intelligence Analyst with www.usentrywaiverservices.com. So guys, today, after that brief introduction, I wanted to talk about a topic that um, you guys would definitely find interesting. Also because of the fact that we got the, this very question today. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And today's topic is going to be U.S. Entry Waiver Processing Times. Ah, now guys, we've spoken about this topic in other videos. You guys have to, have, have to remember that, and again, when I say guys, it's gender neutral, male, female, or whatever. But you guys have to know and understand that for these U.S. Entry Waivers, they are not processed overnight, be it by CBP or us they are not processed overnight now processing times can vary now these discount waiver companies will tell you oh they guarantee that you will get a waiver in six months that's bs some firm well a lot of law firms will tell you the same thing six months three months blah 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 that's bs guys first of all let me give you a good example let's just say you're convicted in the city of brampton ontario and let's go back to my good old favorite possession for the purpose of trafficking Quite often, the Brampton court can take forever, for whatever reason, they can take forever to pull a court file. So let's just say, for example, you came to the Surrey office January 1st, 2025, and you got convicted in Brampton. So, okay, so you came in here in January. Then you're looking at, depending upon the RCMP, part of the process is we need your digital fingerprints for waiver. So once that's done, let's just assume that takes one month. As of right now, it's longer. But let's just say one month. When that fingerprint check comes in, we're going to use that to contact the Brampton court to obtain your court files. Now, if that fingerprint check comes in February 1st, 2025, don't be surprised if the Brampton court does not pull that file until at least April 2025, and that, and that is probably being generous. More than likely, it's going to be much longer. You guys got to remember, each court registry had its own processing time for pulling the court files. And the court files are only a small part of this waiver process. So once we give you our specialized checklist, if you take six months yourself to get us the data from it, well, guys, that's six months processing time for us. If the, court, if the, if the Brampton court, again, takes, I don't know, two months to pull a file, that's an extra two months on top. We like to get everything done within 120 days. But, guys, it's really hard to predict how long it takes to prepare these files because it's all case-specific. Let's say, for example, you're convicted in Vancouver, Vancouver court for PPT. Vancouver court, so now, honestly, they average two weeks. Vancouver court is very fast. So two weeks there versus two months in Brampton. Don't get me started on the Edmonton court or the Saskatchewan courts because that's all over the map. You guys got to remember, so at the time while those court files are pending, we're going to require quite a few items from you guys. Now, mind you, we do 95% of everything. But we're going to require quite a few items from you guys. So um, sometimes we need a drug test, job letter, letters of reference, which we prepare. So we say, okay, Mr. So-and-so, give us the name of so-and-so friends or, you know, a certain number of friends, which is case-specific. 
And in my writer, he's going to take at least a month or more to prepare that, those letters. And we get those letters to you guys. And you guys take forever to get it to the people to get them signed. You guys are increasing your own processing times. Now let's just say there's no criminality. You've got immigration violations. Well, those have to be handled differently. So once we get the relevant information for, the, um, for those violations and prepare the waiver packet, that's additional processing time. That time varies. So it really, really depends. Now, one thing happens is when you guys come to the office and, you guys, and we say to you guys, we need this, we need this, we need this, or we say, what happened? Tell us. And the times you guys say, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Every time you guys say, I don't know something, it increases the processing time because if you don't know, how are we going to know? So then we have to do our own due diligence, which we do anyway, but we have to do our own due diligence to see what comes back. Now, another scenario. Let's say you're from Lahore. You went to the USA, did a fake marriage. It got denied. You appeal. The appeal is pending. You come here to Surrey. You get married. And now 10 years goes past. You try to re-enter the U.S. And they say to you, what about your marriage 10 years ago? You're not going to have any, any info on that. You're not going to know anything. Guess who has to do the due diligence? We do. So once all that comes in, and that right there can take four months just to come in. Then your waiver packet is prepared. As long as you give us the items from the item from the waiver checklist that we provided you guys once you came to the office, then you're prepared. Now, once it's prepared, you have to wait until CBP processes the application. Guys, as of right now, today's they're averaging, if you're lucky, they're averaging 10 months. But generally speaking, they're at the 12-month mark. So you say, well, Ken, they told me 6 to 12. Yes, they do say 6 to 12. But the minute I tell you guys or we tell you guys 6 to 12 months, you guys don't hear the 12. You only hear the 6. Then when month 7 comes, you say, well, Ken, you told me 6 now. What's going on? It's, it's uh, seven and a half months. Then I have to say, well, yes, we told you 6 to 12 months. You say, oh, okay, yes, you're right. So to avoid all that, when you guys come in, we're going to say right off the top, 12 months. 12 months after it's filed, not prep time, 12 months after it's filed. So if you guys take forever to, to provide us the items, tack that onto the processing time. Now, CBP is going to work as fast as they see fit. No one on this planet, including yours truly, can order that agency to work any faster. So you guys got to understand, you're at the mercy of CBP. And I had this conversation today with a client. So... Anyway, so now you guys got the basics. So remember, have some patience for the, these uh, uh, waiver processing times. Ken Scott, Senior, U.S. Immigration Law Intelligence Analyst with www.usentrywaiverservices.com. Give us a shout, 604-562-8140. And we're there if you need us.